She's my sister, too. Some insights about this story. First of all, uh, God uses a famine as a time to come and meet with and appear to Isaac. Uh, famine during this time period with the people who lived in this part of, of the world, was that was a major, major crisis. So much so that Abraham, before, left the land and, and went to Egypt, and Isaac was seriously thinking about it. So God uses a famine as the time of coming and meeting with Isaac, probably for the first time. It's true that, um, that Isaac prayed to God before, and God answered his prayer, but this is probably the first time he actually appears to him. And that is because this is the official passing of the promises on to Isaac. Now, God told Abraham that the promises were going to be given to Isaac, and I'm sure that Abraham told Isaac, but it, nothing was official until this story right here where God appears to him and affirms that it's true. I'm giving you all the promises that I gave to Abraham. The focus is on the land. Uh, he says to Isaac, you're to stay in this land. Now, when he gave the promises to Abraham, uh, he said, I want you to leave your homeland and come to this land. With Isaac, you're to stay in this land. With Jacob, later on, he says, I want you to come back to this land. So the promises all surround the land. Abimelech. We talked about this before, that this is a title. This is not the man's name. It's like Pharaoh. Uh, Abimelech actually means the son of the king, which gave him the authority to be the king. Uh, the Abimelech that Abraham met with was, was actually 90 years before. Like also, like I pointed out at a previous Insights, uh, the, it says the land of the Philistines. Well, these... This is not the same people group as we see later on in uh, Judges and Samuel. Uh, those people were actually, were actually European, brought there by the Egyptians. No, no, this people group here was actually uh, Canaanites, a different group. One interesting thing about that part of the story is you know, when we're in the book of Genesis, we're always looking at, this is the first time. This is the first time someone is murdered. This is the first time, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, well, here we are in this story. There's a first time here, too. It's the first time that guilt is mentioned. Uh, and interesting enough, it's in, it is uh, mentioned by a uh, pagan king who says, if, boy, if we'd have taken your wife, guilt would have just fallen on us to death. The spotlight, of course, is on Isaac here as he lies about his wife. So it's, the spice light's on him for several reasons. First of all, is because his father Abraham did the very same thing. Except with Abraham, uh, Sarah really was his sister, at least his half-sister. Uh, with Isaac, it's a little step farther away. This is actually his cousin. Rebecca is his first cousin. Still, the spotlight's on him because he's repeating. That's why it's, she's my sister, too, the second time. But it's also the spotlight's on him because he just had a mountaintop experience. God appeared to him and officially gave him the promises of Abraham and said, I will be with you. And so to come to a place where, he say, where he's afraid for his life because they might kill him to get his wife. Uh, it just seems strange. But also, it's because of his great love for, 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 for Rebecca. The scripture says that he loved her greatly. And, 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 and Abimelech actually oversaw that he was sporting with his wife. As far as I can tell, there is not a more loving couple 
in all of Scripture. The love between these two people is so great. So, uh, so that puts the spotlight on Isaac even more. We see his faith and his lack of faith. I, I find this interesting. Uh, the faith is simply this. God said, don't leave the land. There is a major famine going on. Uh, everything he has, it could be ruined. And yet, because of his faith, he stays in the land. And God honors him for that. Actually, when we get into the next story, we see how much God's going to bless him because he stayed right there. Then there's this lack of faith where he lies about his wife. She's my sister because he's afraid that they might kill him to get his wife. His lack of faith, and yet it's like God is looking the other way. Doesn't even notice it just, uh, uh, he blesses him for his faith and it ignores his lack of faith. I don't understand that. But, come back next time when we give you more insights on the story.